Hello everyone and welcome back to Nate the Hoof Guy. The cow you see entering the chute right now, she's got a sore right rear foot and in that foot is a sole ulcer. So let's get her lifted up and get started on it. Now to the untrained eye, this foot doesn't look much different than any other cow's foot, but with just a couple swipes of the knife, you can start to see the problem that's hiding underneath here. These rocks that I'm removing now, they're not the source of the problem. They're just caught up in some of the shedding that's happened with this claw. I'm going to zoom in here in a minute and you'll see exactly what this problem looks like. This mark right here is what's pointing us to the problem. Underneath this is a significant size lesion caused by pressure from the pedal bone. So let's get this foot trimmed up and then we'll uncover exactly what this lesion looks like. So how exactly does a sole ulcer form? Let's take a look at a few diagrams here and it'll help explain exactly what happens. So this first diagram shows the inner structures of a cow's foot. And it's this bottom bone, the one circled in red here, that causes the problems. What happens is, is we have some physiological changes with the cows that happen um, around calving times or if they have some type of illness or, or um, some a metabolic imbalance. Something changes in the systems and we can actually get some relaxing of the uh, support structures for that pedal bone. And then what happens is, is when we have that, that relaxation, that pedal bone is allowed to, to move down in the foot. And what that does is causes pressure in this area right here. And it's that excess pressure in this area over time that ends up creating an ulcer. It's not a, a catastrophic event that happens. It's repeated compression over time that doesn't typically happen in a normal foot. In a normal foot, that pedal bone is held in there firmly. But when we have this relaxing, this relaxation, I should say, of the, of the um, structures in there, when it's allowed to drop, that is when that happens. So as trimmers, we try to put the foot in the best position possible to uh, withstand any of those um, situations when they come, i.e. good foot angle, uh, making sure we have good sole thickness, to in, at the heel in the heel bulb area to make sure that we maintain that heel depth. That way, if this does happen, everything is in the right positions to prevent ulceration from happening. But even still, we're gonna have situations that happen and that's what we're dealing with right now. So as we always do, let's remove the loose horn from around this, fully expose it, and then treat the situation.
This particular ulceration has a lot of sole separation associated with it. You don't always see that with sole ulcers. A lot of times that loose horn will be pushed up right up tight to that lesion. In this case, we've got a lot to remove. And now it's time for your obligatory close-up. And obviously with a case like this, she's gonna need a rubber block. We don't want any more trauma happening to that area that's already been damaged. So the rubber block's gonna give that the protection it needs to begin to heal inside and out. And yes, she's gonna get a salicylic acid wrap. The sole ulcer is not something that's gonna heal up in a single day. It's gonna take a while because we need to get that corium to heal first before it can produce new horn there. The salicylic acid wrap is gonna keep those bacteria at bay while that happens. Clean up that glue around that block and we'll get this foot down and check out how she's walking now. And that's going to do it for today, guys. As always, thanks for watching, and we will see you all on the next one.